Now I would like to connect. John will connect to the network management system of the existing network. Just before we are connecting this one to, the, to this network, we must be sure that everything is running well. So I would like to be sure that I have two nodes uh, and I have no alarms. The network management system from DAM is built on a Windows application and it's very, very easy to handle, really intuitive. Normally I would say to John, please put the, put the note list. No, it was not the note list. I, uh, the note status, John, the note status. Take the note status, place it on the left hand side. Here you have an overview of the high power base station. You can of course change to the other one. This is an overview of the high power base station. Everything looks as it shall look. It could be here. In the middle we could place the subscriber register. Just as you can see, here we have organizations, we have profiles, we have SSIs and we have our security key register. This is where we handle the subscribers, where we handle the groups and where you as operation and maintenance can put in new uh, users if you want to. We will show you afterwards how we will do that. On the right hand side you can actually place the map. And this we have the map, this is a Budapest, this is uh, where our conference hall is. Here you get an overview of all base stations. If they are green, they are operating well. If they are yellow, there might be a, or there are small fault. If it's, if it's red, then there, are, then there is a big fault. At the bottom, for example, you could, you could place the BSC list. And this BSC list, as the operator, it is very, very important. Because from this list, you can actually handle the full system. You can define your neighbor cells, you can have a look on your IP addresses, you can look after the checksums, you can see how many subscribers are on, you can actually make all operations from this window. Now you can see it is operating well, I'm confident with that. And I actually, uh, actually have the possibility now to uh, shut, uh, to, to put on my new uh, note. Okay, now we will try to turn on this note. It's not connected to the network. We just want to turn it on before connecting to the network. We will be sure that everything is operating well on the new node. So ask a please start, uh, turn on the node. It is from scratch. The node has nothing in it. There are no subscribers, there are no groups. The only thing that we have done from from done, it is we have put in on the, the the network code and the country code. And we have also put in the IP address telling that this is and node number three. You could do that yourself, of course, but we have done that here. So now it's just turning on. All the LEDs are on, and in a moment they will start to blink. I hope. Uh, otherwise, you have to cut your camera. Close your cameras. <laughs> uh, then, then they will start to blink. And at, le at last, we will have only four uh, LEDs turned on. Now you see the blink. Then they it will connect. And what is very important, now we have actually started a Tetraflex node. Now we can operate with radios. As soon as we put in new subscribers and groups, it is to be as a single node system, one carrier. We have done this very many times. Just go into the field, show this for our customers, turn it on and make some coverage measurements just with this 
Now you see, it is an operation and we are on. But of course we would not like to put in subscribers here because we have our subscribers in our network, in our two-node, multi-node network. So I think it would be a good idea now. No, we, we must, first of all, we actually would like to go in with a remote desktop collection, not on the, on the, on the multi-node system, but on the single node system here, as uh, John will, uh, will connect, just to show you that we have no information in registers here. It is totally empty. Connect by remote desktop, put in the password, and then it will connect to the base station over there with the normal network management scheme as I showed you before. But it will only show that we have a full node one in operation. It operates. You can see organization. We have zero, zero. There are nothing in it. So now we are sure that our existing system is operating well and we are also sure that our new node is operating well. As soon as we are sure that it is operating well, we are not running a lock server here. This is right. Uh, now Aska will try to connect a line to the IP backbone network. That means now we connect this system, we will keep the network management system here, but now he will just connect this system to the two load system. And now you must be aware that it goes very fast. In few seconds it has been updated. So Esker, you are allowed to, to connect and I can tell you we do this also in real. This is not just it is real, it's not fake or tricks. We just connect and then you will see in very short time it will get updated now and now it's actually almost finished. You can see that the checks are over there, the subscriber database has not yet been copied, but it will come in a few seconds and then the database is equal in each system. Um, we'll get an alarm because the checksums are not... Could you please... Could we see the checksums? You can see the checksums. They are... Oh, now they come. We'll try to let us see the other one at once more. Now you see it's almost... The checksums are almost equal. And that means that all data have been transferred to the new node. It means if you have a 30 node system and you want to extend with one, two, three nodes, you can do that at the same time. One time, you just turn it on, pop the box in, and it will automatically come up. So it is very fast. Now, this base station is in full operation with the other nodes. It will run, it has the group members, it has the subscribers that the old system already had. So everything is actually okay now. What we could do, we could show you how we would make a new subscriber in the system. We could make it via our subscriber data base. It is here, now you see, this is a subscriber database, it's filled up now, it is equal in every base station. If I would like to make a new subscriber, I just make a new subscriber. Often I would like to copy, make a copy from an old one because if, if I have set the newest parameters, then I can make copy, copy, copy. So it's very fast to make subscribers. Please make a copy. Now you see it's yellow, meaning that you cannot choose this number because this number is also already busy. You give a new number and your user number could be a different number and a new name. One of the features in the dump system is also that we can operate with the SSI numbers, the easy numbers. 
that we recommend our customers to run and operate with the user number. Because we have made a reference between the SSI number and the user number. Meaning that if you throw away your radio, lose it, it get damaged or whatever, you can just take another radio and you can keep your number because you can keep your user number so we can very easy change this in the system. Meaning that you have the same number also if you get a new radio. Even if it's blocked, if it's stolen, you block the radio, you just block the easy number. But you do not block the user number. That is very good. We could make the same if we would like to make a new group. The, it's in the same place. If you want to have a, a, a new group established, just make a new group and it's already finished. In this subscriber database, we have all our information concerning the use of the subscriber. It is registered in the profile. The profile can decide if this radio should be used only for PTT, if it's also allowed for duplex calls, if it's allowed to join this node or only this node. So every information can be had in this uh, database in the network management system. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. That was actually what I would like to demonstrate how to establish a new TensorFlex node in 30 minutes. Thank you. Thank you.